Workshop Series is produced by second-year telecasting students enrolled at the Milwaukee Area Technical College. I was born in Seattle, Washington, King County Hospital, the same hospital Jimi Hendrix was born in. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my illustrious career began as a child. I'd run around the house and break stuff, and they saw a lot of commercial potential in that, so we moved to Milwaukee. I joined various bands. I was in a lot of school bands. I started out drumming. I had a lot of fun drumming in bands and driving people crazy in the school. It was really fun. And then uh, I joined other bands and I decided, well, drumming's all right, but I want to write music. I got to find my voice, you know? So I took up guitar about four years ago and it's all it's the way it goes after that. Well, here we are. I own this store and <laughs> I made a lot of good investments in the past. And well, well, I'd like to thank my parents for all the help they've given me. Go to my mode of rock and sack and do for you.
hates you. You hate it, and it hates you. <laughs> See the light in the zoo. You hate it. Sickle. Popcorn overdose. Ow. But that's okay. The whole family's grooving and everybody's together. It's a real good family night here at the zoo. we ever did uh, we started out and um, Ron was in the bathroom and he heard Jay playing and he ran out and he had all his toilet paper hanging out of him and <laughs> it's pretty funny another time we um, 
we lip synced the girl with the big forehead and everybody thought we were playing it. And lip syncing is when you play the record and pretend you're playing. A couple times, Neil was into this kiss thing and he tried some blood capsules, but they never worked and he'd do it and people wouldn't even notice. That was kind of <laughs> the oh. low point in his career. I want, one time I had a beard and I shaved it between sets and not a soul in the whole bar noticed it. <laughs> He's kind of like our invisible bass player. People, people ask me during breaks, you know, I'll be out getting a drink or something, and people will come up to me and, yeah, what'd you think of the band? But that's part of his magnetism, you know. Someday I'd like to work at the zoo or, um, you know, cleaning cages or something, or else uh, paint those little yellow lines that go down the middle of the road and, you know, so the cars don't go into the other lanes or hit each other or anything. So you don't go into the other lane. Safety first. He's a real conscientious driver. Sometimes he even goes over the speed limit, but hardly ever. <laughs> Once back in 68 or so, I think I did that. Remember that time you pulled out of the driveway and knocked that guy's tail light off? Ooh. <laughs> Hope he isn't watching <laughs> Go. Yes, we are.
people I hire to watch my valuable instruments and stuff. You can meet them now. I'll introduce them to you. It's Mitch. He's a heck of a guy. He's like part of the arm bending brothers. Hi, nice to meet you. Rob and Charlie. They're having a, like a snack on the job. That's all right though. Charlie, with the glasses, he takes care of all my guitar work. He's a very able serviceman. And I could recommend him to anybody that has like a problem with their 56 Strat or like wants to put a whammy bar in it or something. When he's sober. Yeah, well, even sometimes he's even better when he's jacked a little. He really <laughs> just takes that router and goes to town on a vintage <laughs> instrument. You never know what you're going to get when it comes back. I mean, I can, these guys are all great. I keep all my priceless guitars here. There's no room in stage or studio for my investments. This is a fairly new Les Paul, but you gotta like get this custom baby from the factory. Curly maple top finish that's worth about 1200 bucks. My uh, 66 uh, custom color jazz bass, probably six and a half if you want that. My Moonstone bass, fairly new but great for recording. I used this on our record. It's worth, I don't know, maybe 1700 bucks a list. I got two six string Fender basses here. They're about, I don't know, early 60s. Nobody cares, because like I'm not going to sell them. Got my uh, 57 Les Paul TV model. They call it the TV model because of the color showed up on TV better. And we're on TV now, you can tell. You know, you can see it better than if it was dark. You know, especially if you have a black and white TV. That's all they had in 57. This is my 56 Strat. You saw this earlier. It's worth more than you are. This is my 64. This is kind of, yeah, it's like my beater. I use it to like throw around on stage. This is my 69 SG Custom, three pickup, gold hardware. And this, this is like a Firebird. I think it's a piece of junk, but blues players like them. So I'm waiting for some blues guy to come in and offer me tons of money for it. And this is like a similar thing, like a hollow body guitar, waiting for some you know, jazz snob to buy it off me. Where's your drummer, Ron? Ron, uh, he's in the basement. He's looking through some drum stuff. He was like in a car accident and wrecked up all his drums. And then like before we were playing, he smashed them. He was doing like this Keith Moon bit. and He went through the windshield. They were, oh, well his drums yeah. did too. And so like he's looking for old drum stuff. You know, he goes through drum sets like, boy, you wouldn't believe. He like, he's really out of hand sometimes, but we figure he's a good asset to the band because like, we've got Neil here to keep us from just flying off the handle. And I'm somewhere in between, you know. And Ron brings all the girls along. Yeah. Hey, do you want to be on TV? <laughs> They told me not to bring these other guitars.
many people out there. Well, this is a song I wrote. It's a... Uh I gotta hold me in my freezer. I'll only charge you a buck to see it. What? sharks and probably I could get rich in the junkyard if I really wanted to because I know a lot about the junkyard business from working at record head there's other things I'd like to do eventually in my lifetime 
but you know the roads you leave behind you know mystery lies ahead you never really know what's coming up you know it's like just an endless journey you know through the passages of your mind you just never know what's gonna happen who knows I might marry Neil someday <laughs> series is produced by second-year telecasting students enrolled at the Milwaukee Area Technical College.